story so this story broke i think a few weeks ago or a couple of days ago maybe internet time um this kid in the u.s um essentially incredibly entrepreneurial he'll travel from one side of america to another side of america really far places in order to go to Krispy Kreme to go pick up some donuts and then to go real resell them back in, at, in, in his hometown because essentially the nearest Krispy Kreme is you know however many miles away and no one wants to do that and Krispy Kreme is a fairly popular establishment that sells nice sugary donut treats so he went and did that and made loads of money. Naturally, I think he might have shared it on social or something happened where um, Don, uh, Krispy Kreme was, was alerted to the number of donuts he was buying and he essentially put the caboose in him and said that he couldn't buy a certain amount, which I didn't get, right? Because, you know, you're an entrepreneurial kid, especially nowadays with the, you know, with the rising prices in, in college tuition and all that sort of stuff. He looks like he comes from a minority background as well. It would have been a good story for Chris McKim just to kind of latch onto and to kind of like, you know, use him as maybe as a case study or use him in some kind of marketing promotional work or marketing material, sorry. But instead, these stiff, slow, um, out of touch companies decide to kind of put the caboose on him. They get loads of outrage on the internet because people are like, hey, how are you going to stop this kid from being entrepreneurial and doing what? Do you know what I mean, there's no law stopping people from buying those, all this sort of outrage. And actually, guess what? They re they rescind the decision and they then, I think, supply him with a van or some shit. I wrote an article, but let's read it now. But I'm just thinking, like, why do these companies always do the wrong thing first before they do the right thing? It doesn't make any sense, especially nowadays. Don't they have anybody in their offices who's like the, um, uh, who's like the, what you call? You know how some some companies on Twitter have like a very fun way to kind of interact with their with their kind of customers or consumers. They kind of you know Twitter's a bit more of a reckless place. They kind of you know sometimes a KFC and Burger King account will go at each other. You know that kind of stuff. Like and obviously that means there's somebody on their social media team who's very much in tune with that you know with Twitter speak. Uh, with internet slang with just general pop culture stuff so why don't they have somebody in these companies who's the kind of the the cultural thermometer the cultural touch point the one that's like got their finger on you know got their finger up in the air kind of feeling the temperature seeing where the wind blows and then kind of you know reacting um as needed because if if that was the case you wouldn't you know you wouldn't ban this kid you just let him do do his thing but again what do i know let's read the story first of all before i start raging out um let's get it on here Come on, son. There we go. So, college student who resells Krispy Kreme donuts as a side job is awarded with a new van. Excellent news. So, it says the following here. Um, this is from Fox News, of course, because they are going to report on this one. This, um, the, this entrepreneur's luck just keeps getting sweeter. A Minnesota college student who turned a city's love of Krispy Kreme into a side hustle and who was briefly banned by Krispy Kreme. So he was banned from reselling the donuts before the company changed its tune and awarded him an independent operator title. As now been given a new uh, Daimel delivery van to make his operation run a bit smoother. Each weekend, Jason Gonzalez, 21, will drive 540 miles round trip from Minneapolis, St. Paul to Krispy Kreme store in, in Clive, oh, uh, Iowa. Where the hell is Clive, Iowa in that minute simple, simple? Let's see that on the map. I'm not sure how far that is. United States distances are always a bit weird, isn't it? Let's see if we can find out how far this place is and where this guy's traveling to. But yeah, like, honestly, well, they always have to do that. Chris, like, they always have to just do the wrong thing to the right thing. Just do the right thing from the beginning. And no one's going to care. Do you know what I mean? But he loves to do some dodgy stuff. So anyway, let's, this is Minneapolis St. Paul's in the United States. And now through the power of google maps we're now going to do directions we're going to click that right is that we're going to do click directions and then we're going to go back to the article and then we're going to copy and paste this place clive iowa wherever that is right we're going to see how how what distance is that exactly is, is he going across or is he going down let's see how far he's going holy shit that's a long way he travels what? So by what? What's that by car? Fuck off! It's a three-hour round trip. Well, six hours trip back and forth. That is insane. Okay, friend, look. That's why I don't understand these companies. Can't you just look at this map and just say, okay, cool. This guy does like buy as many Krispy Kremes as you want. That is insane. And if anything, he's essentially proved. He essentially done the market um, research for you, right? There is a de demand and need for your Krispy Kreme treats because. He's driving, like, I'm looking now on the map, right, from wherever he is in Iowa Clive until where the, the um, Twin Cities, Minnesota, where the Krispy Kremes is, it's a three-hour and 40-minute drive, 254 miles. So he's, he's driving six hours and plus back and forth to get those donuts. 
there's not enough Joe Rogan podcast that make me want to do that on a weekend. That's pure entrepreneurial fucking um, thing, like gumption, isn't it? That's when you're really born to do it. You know when people say, oh yeah, but some business, some entrepreneurship is a talent. Some people are like, oh no, you can learn that stuff 10,000 hours. No, no, no. No, no kid is going to risk their weekend, especially six hours either way to go pick up donuts, right? If they're not very much entrepreneurial leaning. Do you know what I mean? This is in his blood, mate. This kid's a fucking boss. Wow. Um, Gonzalez will then return to Minnesota, St. Paul area, and sell the donuts charging around $17 or $20 per box. That's pretty good. Boxes costing roughly $8 each before travel expenses. That's amazing. He's making basically double plus expenses on those boxes. Um, after his little business made headlines, Krispy Kreme asked Gonzalez to shut down his money-making scheme, citing product quality and regulatory compliance, which is fucking stupid. But the chain re re eventually um, came around and decided to help Gonzalez achieve his goals, which include being debt-free when he graduates in 2021, and in part by selling Krispy Kreme donuts. What a great story. So, see, this is, this is a story that these guys don't understand. It's made. It's a fucking bit of content wrapped up in a nice bow, right? Given, it's those kind of content. That's put, it's, it's not even putting one of those shitty birthday presents bags where they kind of stuff it with tissue at the top no somebody has actually went 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 home got a nice bit of wrapping paper plopped it in the middle and did some nice japanese folding nice clean lines no creases use some invisible cellar tape or whatever cellar tape they use it doesn't make you look like it's masked on it nice pins a nice ribbon put a card on the inside sprayed it with scents and handed it to you this is what he's given to him he's given to him a marketing plan on a fucking plate all they gotta do is track this kid, maybe make another account, maybe make a little hashtag, right? And then do a catch up, a, a video in between, a video when he graduates, and then a video kind of like saying that, oh, now he's been hired as the area manager for Krispy Kremes, I don't know, Minnesota or some shit. That would be an amazing story. Done, still is delivered. But maybe in talking about it now, maybe they had to reject him in the beginning to make the story more interesting that, you know, he got rejected from the dance and now he's been chosen. But you don't need to do that. Just pick him from the start. Say yes. Oh, this kid's amazing, it's entrepreneurial, retweet him, share his story, and allow him to kind of go on and prosper. But instead, they kind of say no, wait for the outrage, and then say yes after. And then again, you can't... Is it dumb? I don't know, man. These people are weird. Um, so this is the following, in part by saying Krispy Kreme Donuts. Um, they, so, we are, so we are happy to work with Jason as an independent operator, um, ensure consistent delivery of our high-quality donuts to our fans in Minnesota. Part of the statement for Krispy Kreme said... Now Gonzalez has been presented with a new set of wheels from Freight Waves, which partnered with uh, Dalmir to present him with the delivery van at the Freightway Live Conference in Chicago on Tuesday. Awesome. At the conference, the college senior explained that this, his operation, which is run entirely from his small sedan, started when he went to Krispy Kreme Donuts for his girlfriend and decided to see if anyone else would be interested in purchasing. The treats from him, after posting on Facebook Marketplace, he said he received 500 replies from interested parties. Business Insider reported. Oh my God. That's insanely good that made me think actually about places around here around where i live in stratford where there are certain places that aren't aren't on um what do you call it they're not on uh uber eats or stuff where people want their food to get delivered there it would be fucking cool if i was have a, ability to kind of post on there and say hey i'm selling a delivery service to kind of get these chicken burgers or chicken wings delivered to you because it's actually a really cool chicken wing spot next to where i live that's always got a queue going um um, inside when you want to buy chicken in the street and if you're living about East London, you know there's loads of chicken shops here so if there's one place that has a queue it's definitely good and it's you know one of the cleanest places the guy in there is super cool really good prices the product's amazing so it'd be quite cool to get people around here to kind of you know pay a little bit of a premium to get a chicken the chicken wings and chips and shit delivered to their um um their apartments whatever it may be but this is a pretty cool idea quality idea from the kid involved i love it i love it i love it super entrepreneurial and again just goes to show that you know once you're down on your luck not down on your luck but when you kind of have no other recourse and you really want to you know you want to you want to go to college you want to support your lifestyle you have a girlfriend you have a car you know these kind of things it drives you to like doing things that you necessarily wouldn't do just through out necessity because no one else is going to give you any money. I imagine with these named Gonzalez, he's probably Mexican or some shit. And I know like, you know, Mexicans grew up the same way black people do. You don't get any money from your parents. You have a million siblings who are well more, are, are way more deserving than you are of, of being able to take your girlfriend out to a cinema and shit. Do you know what I mean? So you have to make your own money. And this is an amazing way to do it. So yeah, great story by this kid. Definitely recommend you check it out if you haven't already.